Hi, I'm Robin from the Vortex Marketing Department. And um, today we have a very exciting webinar uh, for you. We are featuring one of our internal brands, a proud member of Vortex, which is Techni Lab. Stefan is going to be taking you through the uh, product range in UV and IR, or rather than infrared. We will be hosting a brief QA session afterwards. So please feel free to ask any questions you may have uh, in the chat box, and we'll go through them afterwards. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. And We'll, I'll hand over to you, Stefan. All right, sure. Thanks, uh, Robin. Thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm Stefan from Technilamp, one of Voltex's internal companies, a specialized division. We mainly focus on uh, infrared and uh, ultraviolet. I, I manage the, the sales for the company. I'll go into um, some of the, the webinar slides, uh, just discussing a bit of the, the benefits, the features, and obviously the applications of, of infrared and ultraviolet. Um, hope uh, hope you find it interesting, and we'll we'll do the question and answer session uh, just after the webinar. Um, so, Robin, yeah, sh should we begin with a with the slides? Yes. Can we, uh, Over to you. All right, great stuff. Well, uh, thanks everybody for for joining. Uh, hope. Uh, I hope that we can uh, fill a lot of your, your answers, um, like I said, with some infrared and ultraviolet on, on the discussion. Um, let's go to the webinar then. So just a bit of, of who we are. We've, uh, we've been around for nearly 45 years um, with the infrared and ultraviolet uh, lamps. So we, we don't deal with in the normal uh, range of, of lighting, um, no LEDs or anything um, like that, um, your general lighting. We, we focus more on the specialized um, range of lamps, which is, which is infrared and ultraviolet. We, we um, manufacture around an infrared or an ultraviolet uh, fitting, and uh, then we supply to the market. So either whether it's heaters or UV disinfection, um, air disinfection, the, the range is quite broad. And we obviously we offer some some machinery on that as well, which which includes some of the the mines, um, food disinfection, and uh, specialized uh, surface disinfection uh, applications. So the focus for today would uh, on on the UV side. There's there's mainly three things that you can. Uh, disinfect, which is uh, which is number one um, with UV, is is air disinfection. You can also disinfect surfaces and water. And um, the other part of the business is our infrared heaters, which I'm happy to share, seeing that it's um, becoming quite cold in the in the past few days. Just a bit to explain what UV is. So. Ultraviolet light predominantly focuses on 300, 254 nanometers in the UV spectrum. Now, basically, what that means is it, it is just before it becomes to a gamma radiation um, between between visible light and gamma radiation, and and you know where you get X rays and and all the other parts of radiation. Um, it's it's uh, you get UVA, UVB, and UVC. Uh, UVA is um, for, for tanning purposes, uh, gel, nail curing, um, thing, applications like that, so, some in the printing industry. Your UVB is mostly focused for, for skin um, illnesses like eczema, psoriasis. And uh, the main focus point for today would be UVC. As I um, said a bit earlier, we um, can disinfect air, water, and surfaces. And we just use um, Philips technology. Um, and I'll briefly explain a bit um, further on that. So as you can see on the webinar, um, just, just on the slide uh, below, this is um, what, the, what the size of particles, what UVC can actually penetrate. So after all your filters and your HEPA filter, let's say it is in, in an air application, in an in a air conditioner, um, you can use a HEPA filter to obviously get rid of some of the dust and pollen tobacco, as you can see there. And then UVC focuses a bit more on your smaller particles, um, which is molds, bacteria, and, and viruses. Now, how UV works, it's a, it's a line of sight. So if it can't see the objects or the product that it's shining on, it can't disinfect it. 
it goes into the the dna level of the bacteria the mold um, or the atom and it rips apart the the dna or the rna structure of of the molecule or the pathogen um, that you are working with so just in simple terms is if it is that you've got um, like listeria that's been an outbreak in the in the past couple of years um, in the food industry predominantly um, it needs uv works with a certain um, amount of power of, of uvc and then about the pathogen because pathogens have different thicknesses wall thicknesses of of a molecule itself and uv needs a certain time to break through that little wall of of the molecule to enable it to function and go straight to the the dna or the rna particle of it and um we we refer to uh, uvc technology as uvgi as well uvgi is is short for ultraviolet germicidal irradiation um, it's a very it's a very safe and commercially available product to the market instead of using things like uh, peroxide or um, peroxide or um, or gamma and um, it's it's a widely used application it's it's been used in, in in plenty how the technology started is is actually in a water application where they found some success and um, in south africa we've we've mainly focused on uh, treating of uh, tb facilities just to disinfect the air um, so that there's no cross-contamination So just some of the benefits of ultraviolet, it's a, it's a completely a dry process. So instead of using um, chemicals to, to disinfect, um, we, we use a dry UV process. There's, there's no, there is obviously some, some safety hazards to it, but it's a completely dry process. If it's used in the correct manner, it can be very beneficial um, to a hospital facility. As you can see on the slide here, We've, uh, we've got a, a corridor of, of a hospital or a, or a clinic and mainly we will install these UVGI fittings against the, the wall um, on, the, on the ceiling or in the corners. It just depends on the size of, of room that you've got. Um, so it's on, on a 24-7 basis because you obviously want it 24-7, um, you want a disinfected area or sterile um, environment and it is so that there's no cross-contamination between an undiagnosed person um, a patient that, that might have come in um, and they're sitting in a, in a reception area before they see the doctor um, that they, the dirty air that they might um, that they might breathe in breathe out or cough it can actually be irradiated by this uv this uv light we've got three ranges one that covers um, from 12 square meters, we've got a 25 square meter unit, and then we've got a 36 square meter unit. So in order for us to establish how many units we need, we just need the, the, the volume of the, the building or the area that you're looking um, to install these fittings, and then just the, the floor space of, of it as, as well. We, we obviously take into consideration um, what, what doors and windows um, are there just to establish exactly where to install these these fittings. As mentioned, there's, there's plenty of applications that we can assist with UV. Um, one of them is being within your ducting within a building. So plenty, uh, a lot of the times there are actually a lot of cross-contamination between if, if it is that you've got a multiple story building and you've got centralized air conditioning. Um, somebody sitting on the first floor is sick, they cough, it, it gets sucked into the air con, it goes through the air con units and it, then it blows out on a different floor, maybe level, level two or level three. And then the people up there um, can get sick as well. Now we can actually assist by, by installing some, some UVGI lamps or UVC lamps short. And um, we, we disinfect the air that actually moves past this air conditioning unit. Usually they refer to it as an air holding unit or a centralized uh, point of distribution. And we mainly focus on, on installing it there. Um, each, each system is, is custom design. Obviously, there, there's a lot of variables within sizes, um, airflow and volumes. 
and we can we we can calculate according to to each and every um, specification. Um, there's there's not a lot of cleaning involved. You only have to replace the lamps once a year. The lamps last for nine thousand hours, and um, we we insist on having a quarterly cleaning basis to just make sure that the UV lamps are still working, the ballast are still functioning, the wires are still in place, um, and, and general general maintenance maintenance rules will uh, apply there. It can be used in um, offices, as you can see on the screen, um, in offices, um, hospitals. We've recently done some work in some of the airports and then obviously in food manufacturing facilities. The, the photo you can see on your left-hand side um, was in a food facility, a bakery down in Cape Town. Where they, where they had uh, a certain pathogen that they needed to get rid of. And they had tried all kinds of HEPA filters and various uh, uh, volumes of air that they pushed through. But with a constant um, temperature that went uh, up and down, um, this, this microorganism actually just started to grow and grow. So we installed some, some UV lights there and the path that we got rid of the pathogens completely. Um, and we've got a happy customer down there and um, we go there once a year, uh, quite an a easy, uh, easy system to work with. We just flip open the hood, change the UV lamps, and make sure everything is still working clean, and obviously just check the wiring in your, your electrical and electronic uh, gear. We also use these UV lamps to disinfect the cooling coils of some of, this is the photo you can see on your left-hand side is, is in a bakery. So what the function is of this, it's, it's quite a maintenance intensive process to have these um, coils cleaned the whole time. And obviously the dirtier the coil gets, the more energy is needed to cool down a certain product or a certain area. With the, with the help of, of UVC lamps, it gets rid of all the germs and the bugs and the, the dirtiness on the coil itself so that there's easier flow of air and obviously there's there's no blockage of um of any of these coils so it's it's quite a simple process we just once again need to find out what the temperature is what the airflow is and the volume and we can calculate how many uv lamps are needed um it's it's quite a it's quite a predominant uh, technology within within the bakeries because the bakeries obviously need to have constant temperature um, with regards to the loaves and the and the and the buns that they bake. So um, this is a very helpful tool just to make your maintenance a bit easier um, and and cheaper to run on lower energy levels. Other applications that we've explored in in the past and uh, which we which we're constantly looking to is uh, things like buses, ambulances, and then the, in the in the mines. So obviously, if there's a conglomerate of people, the risk of getting infected is is obviously higher than what you are on your own. Um, so within the buses, we do have closed UV fittings that we install on the ceiling, on the side wall, or just below the seats so that they can have disinfected air at least for any patients or, or, or employees that, they, that they're transporting. In the ambulances, we've been quite successful with uh, emergency vehicles um, like Help24, um, where we've installed plenty of these. So they have, uh, they have a lot of emergency pickups and deliveries, and it's usually just a period of 20 to 30 minutes we have designed a unit that can disinfect um, the air of the entire ambulance within five to ten minutes it just depends on which option you go for so that your so that your your nurse or um, the response person is is actually protected from from that of a possible disease that the patient might carry and in the mines um, obviously because they work underground uh, quite a bit Silicosis is one of the major problems, and that's just a weakening of the lungs. And tuberculosis is the rate of tuberculosis is quite high within the mines and the mine industry. And what we have actually done is um, installed in a lot of their clinics as well as their transport vehicles, just that uh, there's there's no cross contamination between um, employees, workers, and the driver of the bus, and and so it goes. 
One of the main uh, talking points of, uh, of late is uh, surfaces and how do I clean my surfaces efficiently. We have a product that is uh, open UV fitting that can be installed on the wall or on the ceiling to disinfect surfaces after a chemical clean. Um, we've, we do have two options, a 25 watt unit, which is about half a meter long. Then we've got a 75 watt unit, which is 1.3 meters. It, it is basically a fluorescent fitting, which is in a stainless steel IP67 waterproof casing that can be installed across the board from food facilities to call centers to any type of business that has a lot of people coming in and out and has cross-contamination on surfaces, especially with viruses and, and bacteria that, we, that we're combating at the moment. Um, it's, it's once again chemically free and um, we've had some successful tests so how we can um, go about by having a look at how, how to install these fittings and and how do we how do we actually sell these fittings is we will um, we come out to to your offices we do swap tests with on your on your surfaces whether it's in your reception your boardroom your biometric system or just you know the floors the kitchen or a coffee counter for for instance and um, so we take a swab test, we put the UV lights on, and then we take a swab test afterwards. We send that out to a lab, and then we send the results back to you, just so that you can see what the, what the drop is in bacteria count. And um, these UVC lights can be switched on after hours, and, or, or it can be switched on on a timer, otherwise um, just on a proximity sensor, so that if somebody comes into the, the room, the these UV lights can just switch off. Because they are open UV, you don't want any exposure to your, your skin or your eyes. So the applications that we that we can do and of recent we've we've been quite successful with the disinfection of masks, um, some PPE, some personal protective equipment, as well as safety boots and the likes. And um, we do that either through a carousel uh, unit, otherwise through a conveyor system. Uh, of recent, we've built a conveyor system that can do up to a thousand N95 masks or, or respirators. This is your general hospital masks or your surgical masks that we can do. Uh, you put uh, a mask on the one side of the conveyor, at the other side it comes out um, sprinkly clean, which is completely disinfected. And this is obviously in line so that the mask is still is still um, uh, obviously functional. And um, we we designed these type of applications with with the guys like the CSIR, the Department of Health, um, some of your health laboratories, um, and things like that. Um, but then we can infect some of your fruits and vegetables for extended shelf life as well. And that's uh, quite a quite a big requirement these days. Uh, people are very aware of where their food are sourced from, how clean is it, um, through what process did it go, is there any irradiance? And with UV, we it, it is predominantly on a on our conveyor belt where we can disinfect your berries um, or we can do pita bread, some of some of the meats as well. We just need to get to all the surfaces of the fruits, the vegetable, the meats, or the bread. And it's it's a chemical free process. There's no there's no radiation within the product itself. It doesn't discolor any of the product. It doesn't. It doesn't fiddle with any of the of the substan of, of the base of the product itself. So there's no uh, there's no extra or, or, or differ in taste. It differ it differ in color. Um, it is just a, a, a very safe. Obviously, with with the proper calculations, it, it can be done very safe. Um, once again, it's it is commercially commercially available, um, quite easy to do. We just need to get the calculation right. This is one of the clients of recent that we've served at SBV with the surface disinfection units. And this we have um, done for them. They, they're very satisfied on the bacteria count that's gone down substantially. Um, they had some some major issues with the biometric system where they were just scared that, you know, obviously because of the, the virus of late that they have cross-contamination between 
between staff members. So we've disinfected the, the reception area where obviously a lot of staff is at their coffee counters and uh, then on their biometric system and their boardroom. We also have a, have a new handheld units and I, um, we have actually made up, made up a sample um, and this can be used in, in taxis. Um, it can be used at the offices. It has um, a little brush. If you have a look at your right hand side of the screen, I'll just show you one of the products that we've. So this is basically the product um, which I'd like to show to you. We've got a we've got a little switch here so that you can pull it pull it in. The UV light will go on, and then basically you have some of the brushes. So if it is that you want to disinfect your your laptop or your laptop screen or the inside of your car. Or your taxi something like that it's a very helpful tool just to make sure that you are obviously free of any any germs um, or possible viruses that you might have contracted um, or, or any person obviously entering now this could be quite a quite a nice thing for for things like your uber drivers um, you know your bus drivers your your Putco, uh, your Putco drivers and, and that company and um, then uh, obviously just just from a, on a domestic um, the domestic side of, of it, you can have it in your car. Just make sure that uh, when your kids get in, everything is disinfected. So anything um, so that there's no cross contamination um, for them. And just moving on to a bit of the machinery part of the business, uh, we call it a special project. You can see some of the the four photos that we've that we've done there. Uh, pita bread. Um, we've done some some strawberries, and then there are various uh, medical uh, pharmaceutical applications as well, where we can disinfect uh, packaging. We can disinfect um, any 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 bags or boxes, things like that. Um, on the 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 first photo being pita bread specifically, we've extended the shelf life from two days to eleven days. And um, obviously, with uh, this, this was a supplier that that, that supplies um, Woolworths, and um, they have found it very uh, very nice to actually have that extension on the days for the food not to rot in, in two days. Um, so it's it's very helpful. Uh, with the strawberries that you see down there, uh, we can do a couple of tons per hour of disinfecting strawberries. We just need to get once again to all the surfaces of, of the, the fruit or the vegetable itself, and a couple of tons can be done. And that just, uh, this UV machine can be installed just before they package. Obviously, you want your last point of contact to be as clean as possible before it goes into the packaging. And as I mentioned, we can also disinfect the packaging itself just for that extra safety measure. Now, obviously, I'm sure a lot of you would know what are we doing with regards to COVID-19? How can we apply ourselves and our t technology, the company and all the technical aspects of it to, to actually battle this, this COVID-19 virus from spreading? Now, as we understand it, it is a virus that is being transmitted through the air. So if you, if you cough or sneeze and um, it gets transmitted onto, on, onto surfaces, you know, through the air onto surfaces. And that's the, the big thing these days to have your surfaces disinfected. Now, at the moment, because it's a very unstable virus, and there's a lot of red tape on a global scale to get the correct strain of COVID-19 tested. So a lot of doctors, a lot of professors, and a lot of scientists are in the process of getting the, the UVC technology tested on COVID-19. We have been very successful, and the technology of UVC has been very successful to eliminate the SARS virus, which has happened, in the, happened a, a couple of years ago. And the science shows and indicates that UVC might be a solution to the COVID-19 virus. However, without scientific evidence on the specific strain, we can't say that UV can help for the, the, the well, not the spread, um, to prevent the spread from happening. Now, you can obviously go as far as it goes with washing of hands, using chemicals on your surfaces, um, 
disinfecting the air, which can be done with UV. And then you can obviously disinfect your surfaces with UV as well. But I can't, or we can't say that UV will definitely um, prevent uh, COVID-19 or, or destroy that bacteria. It makes, it makes sense from a scientific point of view, but we obviously need the evidence to state that it does. So the recent successes we've had on applications was with the Listeria outbreak in food, which obviously went with uh, Tiger Brands and Enterprise. And we've been very successful in air disinfection, induct aircon disinfection and surface disinfection to actually get rid of the Listeria. Listeria travels in moisture and in water as well. So we can disinfect water. We recently, we, we well, we're busy with an application of um, an, an AVO producer in, um, in South Africa, where they continuously have problems with the Listeria being at a certain point. And we had a look at the facility and the facility, when, when we did the survey, it indicated that the Listeria is bound to the, to the moisture and the water, the, the, the way that they process it. Um, the Listeria travels uh, through the moisture and the water. So we're going to disinfect the water with some filter systems and then obviously have a look at the conveyor belts. We can disinfect the conveyor belts where the food travel on just a bit before it goes into a freezing process. We've been successful in the SARS virus or the technology of UVC has been uh, very successful in the SARS virus. Um, all the links uh, we'll share um, upon request. And um, that, that virus obviously affected a lot of Asian countries. With E. coli, it's, it's the same. Um, there was a, a big outbreak of E. coli in water itself. Uh, once again, going um, hand in hand with Listeria. E. coli is, is actually a, a, a very uh, dangerous uh, microorganism. You can't consume it. Uh, enough dosage of that will, will be quite um, fatal. And we can disinfect E. coli with a certain dose with water surfaces and once again, air disinfection. Then going a bit into the technical aspect of, of UVC. So if it is that you look at a, at a virus, they form what they say is a colony forming unit, also referred to in short as a CFU. Now, if your CFU, usually it is 20,000 or 30,000, it just depends on the amount of families that it has created, the virus, the bacteria, the mold or the spore. And what we need to understand very well, and that's how we base our calculations, is we need to get to a log reduction. Now, if you look in the, in the middle of your screen, um, you can see that there's a two log, a three log, a four log, and a five log. And, and so it obviously progresses as two, two more um, log functions. And how that works is it just shows that a two log is a 99% disinfected product area, or whatever the case is. Three log is 99.9. .9. Four log, obviously just going on then, is 99.99. .99. Now, if it is that you have a colony forming unit or a CFU that has a a uh, figure of 30,000, you need to basically calculate 30,000 times, I, I need to get to your, or your specification on the, on the food uh, grade, needs to be 99.99 disinfected. Then you basically take the 20, the 20 or 30,000, you times that by 99.99, and then you calculate your dosage of UV according to that. <clears throat> Most of the time um, in your food applications, you need to be obviously as, as sterile as possible. There's a lot of treatments available like heat treatment, um, microwaves, uh, uh, gamma peroxide, as I mentioned earlier. It's quite unstable technologies and which is not necessarily commercially available. And um, that's why we went with a, with a UV option because it is safe, you can control it. There's, there's very um, uh, little gases and things like that that's emitted. So you can have your production facility still running with UV light. And um, 
just just having a look at the at the food side then obviously we disinfect air as well now in the air there is there is um meters there is ways and means of of measuring the amount of bacteria molds or, or viruses within the air once again to get a log reduction of 99.9 percent we just need to understand the cfus the counts of the cfus and then we can calculate the uv lights uh uh, power and dosage just around that. So we've been uh, around for 45 years and we've had a lot of successes over, over the, the years and of recent um, and in, in, on an international um, basis we've, we've supplied over 25,000 fittings um, of the air disinfection units because of the TB that, uh, that our country is constantly battling with we've been very successful to roll that out through most of the provinces in the hospitals the clinics and uh, the food facilities um, we've installed four and a half thousand fittings um, as you can see on the first line to the province of Limpopo successfully serviced it for the past three years where your TB rate is quite high because it moves closer to your equator and um, quite quite a hot province and uh, your, your TB rate is obviously high there, so the reason for the implementation. We've then also done uh, work at the Department of Health of Malawi and Mongolia. Our team is, is uh, getting themselves geared up and ready to go to Malawi within the next few days, where they have a thousand, uh, almost 1,300, or I see 2,200 units that we've supplied there, and uh, they just need to go and maintain it, uh, change the UV lamps, clean up the fittings, make sure the the outputs and the readings of the UV lights are still fine. We continuously supply groups of, of Harmony, Sabania, Anglo, Exaro, um, to mention a few. As I mentioned earlier, silicosis is quite a big problem within the mining sector, and um, TB would obviously be one of the, the, the key bacteria and viruses that, that uh, influences the, the health of the workers there. Uh, a lot of government departments we work with the infrastructure development, um, the Orem Institute, a lot of the universities that we've uh, worked with um, have installed UV fittings within their clinics to keep the to keep the patients, uh, the staff, and and obviously the the people that study there safe as well. Um, one of the food applications we we quite proud to mention of late is uh, Karen beef where they do about two and a half thousand carcasses a day and we have perfected the technology to have a uh, carcass disinfected instead of using uh, hot lactic acid which is quite damaging um, if you if you consume it on on a high dose we have successfully um, uh, done trials where we can disinfect the carcasses uh, two and a half thousand a day um, with with the likes of uvc um, through various UVC chambers and steps, um, and uh, uh, we, we're quite proud of we're quite proud of that. We've worked with companies like Eurofruit in the UK, where we disinfect their berries for extended shelf life, for import and export purposes. Um, the global regulation um, requires for food to be disinfected so that there's no con cross contamination between borders. Uh, we work closely with uh, Into Food Group. Um, now they produce uh, berries, they do mangoes and um, the, the fruits um, alike. And we have uh, recently serviced their UV equipment as well. They do have a conveyor belt um, doing a couple of tons uh, per hour. Bakeries nation, na nationwide uh, disinfecting the loaves as well as the, the cooling coils and the, the air conditioning units. And um, yeah, just to move on to Crown National, which we've teamed up with supplying a lot of uv units to their to their butcheries which is their clients guys like uh, meat world um roots roots group um there's there's quite a, a number of of butchery groups that we disinfect the water the surfaces and the air as well as some of in some instances uh, we disinfect the product itself we work and collaborate to perfect the technology um because we believe it could be a possibly a dangerous uh, technology, we collaborate with guys and companies and organizations such as uh, the CDC, um, which is the Center of Disease Control um, in, in the USA. We deal with uh, people and persons and employees at the CSRR that's been extremely helpful of late. Um, then we also work with a couple of the professors of the University of Pretoria 
um, and facilities like Steve Biko, which is an academic uh, facility in, in Pretoria, close to, close to the University of Pretoria. Moving on to the next slide. So it says, are all our products proudly South African? Yes, um, we are proud to say that we we do only uh, South African products. So it, we import the lamps from Philips, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the slide, but everything from research and development, design, as well as assembly, quality checking, implementing, packaging, dispatching, and um, with any comebacks, we all do from our, our premises up in, up in Johannesburg, where we've got a, a, a team of, of technical uh, people, engineers, that does all of our drawings. So we can easily, easily amend our drawings according to a certain specification. We, can, we, we basically build around an infrared or UV lamp and uh, what is nice is we've, we would like to see ourselves as a, a company that tries to vertically integrate. So that just means that we don't send all of our work out because it's intellectual property, but we are proudly, uh, a proudly South African company with, with, uh, with local staff. And moving away a bit from, from ultraviolets, moving towards the, the other offering that we do, the technology, which is infrared which we have uh, seen as a very successful market within the retail sector, which, which includes Builders Warehouse, uh, Hirsch's, um, some of your Buco stores, uh, Voltex. We have a great distribution network through, through Voltex with, with, over, with our, over 45 branches where we distribute. So any place in South Africa, we can have these heaters. Now we offer heaters for, for in-home use, for, for external use, like on your patio, your veranda, um, where it basically heats the outside area. It's not really affected by any, any of the elements, um, like strong winds. And um, it is a unit that lasts for, for 5,000 hours. We've, we've made, um, over the past uh, 20 years, we've been manufacturing infrared heaters successfully. It's a, it's a very good quality product with very low return rates. Reason for our successes within the retail uh, chains, as I've mentioned, like, like Builders Warehouse. Um, we, we, can, uh, we distribute between five and 10,000 units per year. Um, we fully stocked up. Um, we, we've, we're knowledgeable on what it can do and what it can't do. Um, it's opposition to technologies like um, your small bar heaters you get at home, as well as uh, gas heaters, underfloor heating, and it's the most efficient way of heating your inside or your outside area. Um, and it's endorsed by ESCOM for, for an energy saving product. We have products that can go into the bathroom as well, which is IP65. Now that just means that your electrics are covered and um, uh, to, to moisture and so, some water droplets so that you don't get a short within the heater. We can do up to up to 16 square meters with, with our heaters. Um, so if it is that you have a, a, a four by four uh, patio, uh, one or two heaters should suffice. Um, they 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 quite uh, they quite efficient. Um, they they instantly go on. You don't need to wait to close all the doors um, or all the windows and wait for the area to heat up. It focuses directly onto the person or onto the the object or the product that it's shining on. And that's how, how we get our efficiency as well with low wattages. We do have offerings for warehouses. Now, obviously, in a warehouse, you have a big roller door with some workstations on your receiving and your dispatch. And it could become quite cold in your winter months and uh, some of the days where, where the weather is just a bit off. So we, we install these heaters either on tripod stand, mounted against the wall or mounted on a ceiling. It just depends on the ceiling height. And it works. It works very nice. You can also have it under your table in in some some other forms and shapes that we do have on offer as well. But the majority of the time, we have people just uh, shining it from uh, mounting it on the wall, shining directly down onto the worker and the workstation, so that they are comfortable. Hands are warm. Table are, um, is nice and warm within within your cold winter months that we've recently just experienced.
So moving on a bit to the technical side, so what is the difference between conventional and home infrared heating? Conventional heaters try to heat up the air. So it uses, let's call it 1000 watts or one kilowatts of power to generate heat and heat up the entire room before it actually heats up the person itself. Where our product focuses on the person itself. So instead of trying to heat up, you know, 12 square meters or, or 16 square meters of, of, of air and, and volume of, of space, you just focus on, on the person or the, the, the product or the item that you want to, to heat up. So we're not trying to, we, we're not wasting time by, by trying to heat up the air, like the likes of, of air conditioners or your underfloor, underfloor heating. Does make sense to buy or use an infrared heater um, instead of an oil or gas heater? Yes, so our heaters run on two rand per hour, um, opposed to gas, which ranges between 20 to 25 rand an hour. It just depends on the setting that you're using. Now, in a lot of the restaurants that we have dealt with installing infrared heaters, they they come to us and they say, I'm spending about 30, 40,000 rand on gas a month. Number one, number two, it's it's quite a high intensive maintenance uh, product to run because I need to fill up my nine kilogram gas bottle on a, a daily or, or a, a weekly basis. And it's, it's quite a lot of admin and, and, and PT. I need to run to the garage, fill it up for two, 300 rand, then I bring it back and the next day it's finished again. So where we come in there is to say that, well, you can install five of these infrared heaters. It lasts you for 5,000 hours plus and there's no maintenance to it. There's no there's no smell to it. Um, it's 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 instant. Um, there's there's very little downtime. You know, once you switch it on, it it comes on immediately. So um, how long does it take to warm up a room? Once again, it's it's instant heat. Once you switch switch it on, because of the short wave technology, um, all the the electrical components work together in such a, a, a chemical way within the infrared lamp that it ignites immediately, and there's no there's no real downtime or waiting for you to heat up or waiting for the for the area to heat up. What is infrared rays? So so it works like the sun. If you stand in the shade, you'll be cold. If you stand out on the, in the sun, uh, you'll be hot. It's it's a very similar thing to what shortwave infrared is. Um, it heats the object or the person which which it shines on, as as I've mentioned, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, let me call it waste time to, to try and heat up the the entire room. What do I get when I buy my infrared heater? So I get a heater. Obviously, you get a 1.5 meter cord. Um, we make it short for for a specific reason and. The reason would be for if it is that I install 10 of these heaters within a restaurant or a hotel, I need to um, wire it directly to a DB board. So for me, so so an electrician would just cut off the cord, um, mount his uh, chocolate block with, within the heater, which is quite easy to plug in and out, and um, then they mount them in, in, in series or in parallel so that they can take it to the to the DB and um, put on a circuit breaker. Uh, you do get two screws, so that's just your general Fisher plugs. It has a nice bracket um, right at the back of the heater with, with holes that we've, we've um, already drilled in for, for the consumer or the customer, so that they can just drill two holes, put your Fisher plugs in and mount your heater. And then we do have uh, an instruction manual just on your mounting heights, your safety aspects, how long it lasts, and, and where you can buy replacement parts. So these heaters can be mounted, but as I mentioned earlier, within the warehouse, you can also have it on a tripod stand. You can, we, we don't recommend that you place it on the floor. Um, you don't get a good range of, of heat if you place it on the floor. So we'd rather have you mounted against your ceiling or against your wall, or obviously on a mobile unit um, like, like the tripod stand. We do offer a, a different uh, uh, configuration of an infrared heater called a Snuggy. So it's just a, a little foot warmer, very low on power, and, and that we can recommend and that we've built so that you can have it for your feet under the desk um, at your office or, or at home. And uh, the next question is how many infrared heaters do I need to warm a room? 
So you just need to calculate the square meterage um, of, of your building, your room, or, or your dining area, and we can calculate it according to there. Um, you know, in an open area like your outside patio, it, it comes down um, to about six to eight square meters. In an enclosed environment like a dining room inside your house, in your bathroom, it can go up to about 16 square meters. So um, it's it's quite an e easy installation. You can mount the infrared heaters yourself. You just uh, need a drill with a, with a five millimeter uh, drill bit. Um, we do provide the fissure plugs, as I've mentioned earlier, and uh, drill the two holes, put the heater on, and put your fissure plugs on. Plug your heater, and uh, Bob's your uncle. There we go. When the room should it be installed? So obviously, where it doesn't bother you um, in your in your eyes and your face, so maybe on the side wall um, or on your on your ceiling. It uh, has very little heat that goes up towards your ceiling, so you won't have any discoloration. If you've got a a wooden beam or you've got a normal ceiling board, a concrete ceiling, it won't discolor your paint, aluminium, um, uh, or any metal for 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 that for that reason. How can the, the heaters be controlled? So it can either just be on and off. You can mount it on a sensor as well. You can install a little switch. It, it, it comes um, plainly as a, as a plug and play. So when you plug it in, the heater switches on. However, um, a lot of the times within the schools, um, in the classrooms, we've done a lot on sensors so that um, if, if the space isn't occupied, that you don't actually waste energy by um, having the heater on constantly. Thank you very much. Uh, that is the last slide of, of th this webinar. Um, I really appreciate everyone uh, listening to, to us. Ho hopefully it was informative and um, we're ready to take your questions. Thank you so much for that, Stephen. Uh, that was really awesome. Um, we've got quite a few questions, I can see. I'm going to try to get through all of them, but I'll uh, hold on to the bottom. Sure. Uh, Question, uh, we, came, we still came in from Stephen and he said, can we get rid of COVID-19? I know you did address this, but maybe just to highlight. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. sure. Um, so, sorry, the person whose name is Stephen. Yes. Uh, Stephen, hi. I uh, hope you can hear me clearly. Um, so, so yes, as, as I've mentioned, just on the COVID-19, um, evidence shows that it might be able to combat uh, COVID-19, but because we haven't got the correct strain yet within uh, within South Africa globally. It's 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 quite uh, difficult to get hold of um, the correct strain because the strain continually uh, mutates. Um, the evidence shows on the SARS virus um, that that it did work, but on the COVID-19, uh, unfortunately, we can't we can't say anything with uh, some backed up evidence from um, from from the um, authorities. I'm testing. Stevens also asked, can these be used to disinfect the N95 masks? Yes, yeah, so so um, with the correct dosage, we can um, we have two options on that. You can either buy a sterilization cabinet, what they also refer to as a Stericab. Now the doctors use that to disinfect the utensils. And um, within 30 seconds, you put you place your N95 masks um, with, within this little chamber. It's it's uh, basically uh, half the size of a microwave. Put it in there for 30 seconds under the right amount of UV, and um, it can disinfect the N95 mask um, quite sufficiently. And uh, just uh, maybe from a from a safety aspect, there's obviously various levels of filters within the N95 respirator. And none of those fibers are damaged on um, with UVC. You just uh, need your <coughs> correct time and your correct dosage. And um, yeah, you can definitely. It is endorsed by the CDC. We've done some. We've done some extensive tests on that, and we are happy with the results on the on disinfection of those masks. Yes. And uh, how do you test these units to make sure they are working as intended? So we, what we can do there is have a UVC meter. That's just just a reading device to make sure that your microwatts per centimeter square. Sorry, and I'm getting a bit technical, but just to explain it properly, um, just to make sure that your microwatts per centimeter square or your joules per meter um, square is actually within the readings of the um, of the levels that is recommended by the likes of of CD, CSRR, the World Health Organization. Yeah. And a question here from the last what is the IP rating on these heating? 
Um, so generally, it just depends on, on the application. Uh, we can make up to IP67, which is uh, completely uh, waterproof. Uh, we can make a bit lower IP ratings. It just depends on the, on the application as well as the availability on, um, on, on the budget and what you're willing to spend. And a, a last question, can these be embedded into existing lighting infrastructure? It can be. It just needs to be um, monitored and supervised um, by a Technilam technician. Um, I won't recommend, obviously, having them on, but yes, you can do that. Um, usually, you know, we do have four foot lamps and the four foot fittings is usually 36 watts. So to accommodate the, the lamps that we've got, we've got a 36 watt lamp, but we also have a stronger lamp, a 75 watt. It's quite an easy change over just the ballast and and some of the, the wiring, and uh, then we can most definitely do that, yes. And Dominic, here, and taxi units standalone, or do they fit into existing lighting infrastructure there? So um, it is standalone, so I would recommend the, the little handheld units. As I, as I showed you um, a bit earlier, I would do something like this. Quite an easy hand tool, um, about the same size as a, as a straightener or a hair dryer, just to put it into perspective. Um, I would use something like that. Otherwise, we also put something on a on a tripod stand with a UV light that just goes through um, through the windows, and uh, for a certain amount of time, um, we do that. So no no um, integration within the current lighting system of a of a taxi or bus. No. And uh, is there a product for disinfecting animal houses? Housing? We, we have looked at some chicken coops as well as your um, pig rearing facilities on your on your livestock uh, side. Um, I would say a handheld unit, as I've just showed, um, could, could work if it is just for, for home use. But otherwise, if it's on a commercial level, we are busy with uh, some, some products um, in development. But yes, it, it can most definitely be done. And uh, how often does the need to be replaced? The lamps last for 9,000 hours. Um, so if you have it on 24 seven, it is, it's more or less a year. Um, if it is that you have it um, on only for eight hours a day, you just need to calculate how many days you've used the lamp. The light will still shine blue, but that's a false indication. Your UVC output isn't there anymore. So basically the, the chemical compound isn't, isn't functioning the way it should. And then you can buy a replacement lamp after 9,000 hours. Okay. David here has asked, do the lights create ozone and is this a problem? So the, the science shows that you can't have UV light without any ozone production. The Philips lamps that we use um, has a 185 nanometer uh, quartz filter that they in, input within, within the UV lamp itself. It does create some ozone. About 7% of the lamp does create ozone. As much as we try to get away from ozone um, with the science, we can't. However, about 100 millimeters away from the source, which is the lamp, obviously, um, the ozone forms with the CO2 and the nitrates that we inhale and uh, exhale on a daily basis. So if you aren't too close to the lamp, it won't be uh, much of a problem. And uh, another question from David, can the vehicle sanitizing system work while the vehicle is occupied? Uh, yes, so that I would recommend if, if you um, have a look at the slides, we've got some ambulance disinfection units. So it's, it's, a, it's a more closed UV unit which disinfects the air, but open UV fittings we can't have while the space is occupied, unfortunately. Um, I would recommend um, perhaps before a trip or after a trip just to make sure that the, the units are disinfected. But um, we do offer these air disinfection units for the ambulances in, in 12 volts or 24 volts. So it can run off your battery or your, your um, uh, cigarette lighter, that um, 12 volt sockets. Um, it can run off that, yeah. And I think uh, how long can people be exposed to UVC? Uh, sorry, Robin, just say again. Uh, how long can people be exposed to UVC? Um, not very long. Um, it is a very uh, harmful product um, or very harmful technology is if it's exposed to your skin and eyes. So I would just recommend um, some some UV goggles. Just make sure your, your eyes and your skin are protected and then you should be put, um, safe. If you just wear, wear a jacket and some gloves and, and just a face shield, um, you will be mo um, you will be safe. 
And what are the power consumptions for UVC? Uh, sorry, Robin, just say again. What are the power consumptions for UVC? Uh, so it starts from uh, the, the range that we predominantly work on is about from four watts going up to about 200 watts. Um, so, it's, so it's not a very high powered uh, uh, product. Thank you. And the question is, uh, let me just try to see. Oh, here's a good one. How do you they make it safe to use where people are, for example, the waiting area in a hospital? So that we can do with your air disinfection units um, in, in like a waiting area. So it's a, it's a fitting that is completely sealed. It's, they only have um, UV rays emitted at the top, right at the top of the UV light. It needs to be installed at a certain height um, from, from the ground, about 2.1 meters to a maximum of about 3.5 and then it's completely safe. You can have a look at the UV lamp um, from about a four or five meter distance and you'll be completely safe. Um, it, you just obviously don't need to um, move too close to the item. Uh, and um, if I've got three fluorescent tubes in one fitting, can I change one with the UVC lamps? Will it affect the functionality? Um, yes, you can. You can most definitely retrofit it, um, JRAM. Um, most definitely, you just need to um, make sure that your ballast and your UV lamps um, electrical uh, specifications are the same. Your amperage, your voltage, and your wattage. Thank you, Stephen. I just want to say that we have launched an offer where you are welcome to shop the Tiffany Lamp Heater range on the Voltex website. So please do click on that button and go and have a look there. And uh, you can shop the Techno Lamp Rage through the Vast Voltex Distribution uh, Network, as Stefan mentioned. But uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for your time, Stefan, and for a really awesome uh, presentation you put together for us sure. today. Sure. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for, for hosting us and for having us. Um, to everyone that's listened in, uh, really appreciate your, your comments and your questions. We'll be happy to answer it. Robin will provide the details to where you can email to um, or a number of, of contact. Thanks so much. Yeah. Do feel of, of contact. Thanks so yeah. much. Please do feel free to send any questions you might have uh, to marketing at Voltex.co.za. We will put you in touch with the relevant people for that. And please do stay tuned to uh, the Voltex social media pages as well as our website for future webinars that we have over these coming days and weeks. But thank you, everyone, and uh, stay safe.